Hello and welcome back Legionnaires, Mars Hill Magnus here bringing you another Age of Empires 4 video covering the very topical subject of graphics and visuals in Age of Empires 4. I would like to start this video with a very bold statement against how loudly members of the gaming community seem to be shouting that Age of Empires 4 looks dated, cartoony and unrealistic against their own subjective expectations as to what a game should look like in 2021. Subjective being the key word here. It's an opinion, not fact. My opinion is that Age of Empires 4 looks clean, beautiful and readable. I want to dive into why I think that. So there are three areas in line with my previous claim that I want to cover. And these will all be timestamped below if you want to dart to and from a specific topic. Firstly, I will give my thoughts on the graphics, which will be further divided into three subtopics where I will discuss my thoughts on the anticipated system requirements, the style chosen for the game, and the animations. This will be followed by how I feel the devs have presented Age of Empires 4 as a living, breathing world, and how the game world looks and feels alive. And lastly, the user interface, an area which I can't see has been discussed broadly, uh, to a degree, but I personally take great joy in being able to easily understand UI within a game, which in turn improves my own personal experience when playing a game, and I feel that Age of Empires 4 does this very, very well. Before the deep dive, if you enjoy the content I'm providing, please go ahead and like this video, and comment below as it really helps the channel grow. It also gives me the opportunity to interact with you, the viewers. If you want to see more content from me, please subscribe and press that bell icon for instant notifications as to when my content goes live. Without further delay, let's dive right into it. Starting with the topic of graphics, I want to firstly talk about the system requirements. They are currently unknown, but I wouldn't anticipate this to be anything outrageous, both on the recommended and minimum requirements front. I would imagine Relic and Microsoft would tailor their minimum requirements to be in line with other popular games and recent release titles, to ensure accessibility to all players to get the most bang for their buck. If we look at A Year of Rain, Iron Harvest and Stronghold Warlords, all which released either in 2020 or 2021, their minimum requirements seem to be fairly in line with one another. An i5 processor or equivalent with the processing speed in the range of 3 to 3.5 gigahertz, a graphics card with 2 to 4 gigabytes of VRAM and at least 8 gigabytes of memory. The same can be said to the same extent for the recommended system requirements where an i7 processor or equi equivalent with 3.4 to 4 gigahertz of processing power, a graphics card with at least 4 gigabytes of VRAM and the range of 12 to 16 gigabytes for memory. If you purchased a brand new gaming PC in the last 5 to 6 years, you should be fine and adhere to the minimum requirements. As a wild card, I have also included the minimum system requirements for League of Legends, as that is arguably one of the most popular strategy games out there with a huge player base. As the developers of Age of Empires 4 are pushing to make this the most accessible Age of Empires game to date, they will most likely be keeping the minimum system requirements for Age of Empires 4 in close proximity to games with a huge player base, so that no doors are barred against them. Looking at the minimum requirements of League of Legends, we can see that they are in sync with the minimum requirements of the previously listed games. We can safely assume DirectX will be used as Microsoft own and develop the DirectX API, so Vulkan can be comfortably discounted in this case. As a result, we can hope for the implementation of ray tracing for those of us who have the 20 and 30 series NVIDIA RTX graphics cards. Another selling point is that the game resolution is designed to be enjoyed all the way up to 4K. So those of you with a beefy setup and a monitor compatible with 4K resolution, you are definitely going to be in for some real eye candy. If my assumptions and predictions are correct with the system requirements, Age of Empires 4 should have no problem running comfortably at 60 frames per second on the majority of systems that consumers have. I am also happy to see that the developers are pushing the game to be enjoyed at the highest end of the graphic spectrum, ensuring textures can be scaled up for 4K resolutions. I just hope they tailor for consumers that have been lucky enough to acquire a RTX graphics card so that ray tracing may also be enjoyed. 
I'm curious to see what other graphics options will be available to players. There has already been confirmation from developers that the players will have access to options, in quotation marks, to completely customize the visuals of the game. I assume these options will cover saturation, sharpness, brightness, contrast, gamma, and so on, so that you can personalize your own experience. I also hope there will be colorblind options for those with varying degrees of colorblindness for full accessibility. Moving into the discussion of style, there is a clear divide in the community where one side is shouting that the direction of the stylized graphics are too cartoony and comparable to mobile games, whereas the other side say it's in line with what they would expect from an Age of Empires game. I've seen on the forums and across the web individuals comparing Age of Empires 4 to the likes of Total War, Spell Force 3, etc. Games such as Total War aim to be hyper-realistic and aim to portray realism to its fullest extent, both mechanically and visually. In my opinion, Age of Empires as a series hasn't been about portraying real realism to its fullest extent, but applies appropriate flavours and levels of realism which gives the Age of Empires franchise its own unique charm and character. And I personally think it's done well in Age of Empires 4 from what we've seen so far. I like it. The style chosen highlights accents of realism for units and buildings alike in association with the given time period. You won't see the individual rivets in armour or a full realistic portrayal of a knight's kit, but you will be able to tell what kind of armour a unit is wearing, the weapons they are wielding and what kind of culture their buildings represent too. I would agree in some cases the units look a little outrageous from a size proportion standpoint, but as a consumer who enjoys the competitive scene both as a player and a spectator, it helps with the readability of the game. But I am sure that these will be tweaked in time either pre or post release. I do agree though, those arrows are seriously outrageous, but the devs have already confirmed that there's been tweaked. Reinforcing the argument for the chosen style, the devs have fully utilised this approach which allows simple yet identifiable characteristics of each civilization. You can tell the developers have done their research. They travelled to Mongolia to obtain first-hand research on this kind of stuff. So I think credit should be given where credit is due. The Mongolians in particular seem extremely unique in their appearance, appearance compared to other civilizations revealed so far. Their culture is well portrayed with their buildings and the outfits of the units. The same goes for the English, Chinese and Delhi Sultanate, which all also look uniquely different in their appearance. In regards to the animations already shown off in Age of Empires 4, I agree that for the units specifically they look at clunky in places and a bit gammy, but they tell the player exactly what they need to know. Units bracing for impact from a cavalry charge, a successful charge from cavalry seeing their lance splinter into pieces, reloading animations from siege equipment and other ranged units, destruction of buildings, being on fire to iterate the kind of damage done, etc. They inform the player of what's going on and what their army is up to. I think this could be refined to look smoother in cases. It's somewhat jarring and can detract from the immersion. I imagine most players would want to sit back in awe and enjoy the interactions between units fighting for supremacy. Overall, in my opinion, Age of Empires 4 is what I would expect from a 2021 release, and it hits my own personal baseline requirement from a graphics perspective. I like the style, but I do hope they iron out the animations of the units in combat, as they are a little jarring when first witnessed. I'm very much looking forward to jumping into the game myself, enjoying all the hard work the developers have put in for the community to enjoy. I expect some brilliant screenshots flying around the web upon release. In the gameplay previews, the settlements seem to grow in a natural way through the ages, and how a player and their settlement can interact with the environment. It gave me the sense of a living, breathing world. One of the first things I notice is what has now been dubbed as the Ghost Builders, acting out animations of constructing the buildings from within the structure, to give a player a sense of realism, portraying what builders would do in reality during various stages of a building project. They act as a visual aid. If there are more villagers constructing a building, it shows these ghost builders animating exceptionally fast, which in addition to immersion allows a element of readability, giving a player the information they need instantly, as opposed to clicking on the building and seeing what percentage the building process is at in the information panel. You will have also noticed the natural occurring roads and pathways being created between buildings, which gives the impression of a settlement progressing organically, 
without direct influence from the player. This adds to the fidelity of the game and the natural development of a settlement into a town and then into a city. In addition to this, the game world looks fantastic and really draws you in. You have swaying trees giving the impression of wind, a highly detailed landscape with variations in tree colours, bushes, flowers, rubbles, rocks, cliffs, flowing rivers and streams, and large variations in height of the terrain, making the battlefield more interesting from a strategic and visual perspective. The dynamic lighting provided by the passing clouds gives a sense of time. If implemented, I could imagine ray tracing looking phenomenal in the Age of Empires 4 setting. During the gameplay preview, you also hear idle chatter between your units, screaming in fear when opposed by overwhelming odds or cheering after a momentous victory. They also whisper to one another when the ambush mechanic was revealed. The Age Up mechanic also plays a role in immersing the player into the Age of Empires 4 world. When aging up, the differences in eras are shown in changes of the building's architecture, right down to the clothing of your villagers, which also change when progressing your civilization. In line with the naturally occurring roads, these develop with the ages, going from dirt paths and avenues into wonderfully paved stone roads. All in all, these somewhat small details all add up to pull the player in. I would like to see more wildlife in the game, which disappear from the surroundings as you expand. Wildlife that isn't directly attributable to gameplay, such as birds flying through the sky and small land-based animals running through the forest and open plains. I can't see that there has been any confirmation of hostile animals so far, but this would be a great addition too. In front of us now, we have a screenshot of the Age of Empires 4 user interface, and my immediate impression is that it is a very clean and readable UI, with a high contrast compared to the game world, clearly separating it from the game world space. The UI is minimalistic, so it doesn't take up valuable space on your screen, and is ordered in a logical way. In the bottom left hand corner you can see the four resources and the number of villagers assigned to gathering each of those resources, helping a player with resource management. Just above that you have your current population and max population followed by the number of idle villagers you currently have. To the right of that we have the information panel giving you information of your currently selected unit or building, providing statistics on health, armour type and weapon type. To right of this, we have a QWERT grid layout where QWERT, A, S, D, F, and G, and Z, X, C, V, and B keys represent the symbols on the grid for issuing orders to your selected units or buildings. There are easily identifiable symbols for each of the orders A to attack, S to stop, F to garrison, G to ungarrison, G, Z to repair, V to stand ground, and delete well to delete the unit. I am unsure as to what D represents in this case, but I would imagine this is unique to the villager and maybe for gathering the nearest resources. Maybe those of you in the comment section have a better idea. Moving on, you have the same QWERT grid layout for selecting buildings you want to construct, but one unique difference compared to previous Age of Empires games is that it doesn't follow the civilian military building segregation. Instead, buildings are split into their respective ages. If you wanted to build a house, you would press QQ. For a barracks, QS, as they are available in the Dark Age. And for a blacksmith, you would press hotkeys W and then Q, as this is only available in the Feudal Age. I found this to be very intuitive, and I also imagine it will be easy to pick up for RTS veterans and new players alike. Note that the building icons have colour coding applied as well. Anything with a bronze warm colour applied is a production building for military units, and the green buildings are for researching technology and upgrades, another great implementation of the UI to inform the player as to what buildings do what and giving them varying importance. By following the QWERT grid layout, it allows a player to keep their hands to their respective area of their keyboard, reducing the need to keep moving your hands back and forth. The power is within your fingertips, quite literally. I would also imagine that there will be presets for hotkey bindings for both left and right handed players, further improving the accessibility of the game. In the bottom right hand corner you have the minimap, which I hope there are options to increase the size and changing how the colours are represented to give more contrast and visibility as to what's happening on the map. 
Over to the left again, we have the groups assigned to hotkeys 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 with a number in the top left hand corner of the group icons signifying the number of units in that group. The group icons also tell the player what kind of units are within that group. In this case, we can see three groups of bowmen, three uh, group three containing 10 spearmen with the group one containing eight cavalry with a special icon representing a hero unit for campaigns. In the top left hand corner we have the campaign objectives and at the top middle of the screenshot we have an indicator as to what age your civilization is in, in this case the feudal age, age two. Ultimately, I found it easy to understand how hotkeys interface with the UI and the devs have done a great job of keeping all the information to as few areas of the screen as possible, with heavy emphasis to the bottom left hand corner, meaning you don't have to dart your attention to all corners of the screen. I also want to comment on how the building grid looks simple too, and you can easily see how buildings line up against the world, helping you plan your base effectively and efficiently. To conclude, I feel the UI definitely helps with being able to tell what's going on in Age of Empires 4 and is possibly the most important facet of the game in enabling a player to easily interact with their base, units and environment. I also feel the colour chosen for the UI makes it feel more modern and up to date with the times, yet grounds it as something familiar and recognisable as being from the Age of Empires franchise, establishing an almost timeless formula which sits well in Age of Empires 4. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope all the points I've raised get across and reinforces my statement that Age of Empires 4 is a clean, beautiful and readable game. I would love to see what you, the viewers, think and if you disagree or agree with my points. If you've enjoyed the video, please go ahead and drop a like or dislike if you haven't and post your thoughts in the comments below. I would really appreciate it as it helps the channel grow and helps me improve my videos in the future. Be sure to subscribe today and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications as to when more content from me goes live. Until next time, this is Mars Hill Magnus signing out for now. Ciao.